From time to time there are often asked questions that need to be answered, like how do I choose a subject of my video? Why don't I show photos of my test setup? Why don't I do buying advice? And so on. This is such a video. There is this joke that says that when you put three audio files in a room, you have four opinions. That joke is closer to the real world than you might think. It has to do with how a stereo is experienced by the owner, what his education is and what he has experienced over the year. And yes, it's always men. There are people that are focused on the tech. There are people that go good on loud sound and firm bass. There are people that are sensitive to appearance of the equipment. There are even people that go for vintage equipment. Then there are those that love the high-end tradition. In real life, real people always are some mix of these archetypes. I personally mainly am part of the high-end culture, where the main goal is to be emotionally touched by refinement in music and sound quality. Of course I measure every streamer and DAC I review. But it's what I hear that's leading. If network specialists tell me that network switches can't have influence on the sound quality because the way network technology works, I'm ready to believe that since it makes sense from a technical standpoint. But when I then do hear differences between switches, I don't deny what I'm hearing because of what the theory tells us. The theory has been wrong far too many times in the past. DIN 45500, the German hi-fi standard, wanted a flat frequency response from 20 to 20,000 Hz. But then Orthofon discovered that their cartridges sounded more natural if they had a slight roll-off in the highs in favour of better phase response. In the 90s, Harman Kardon made great amplifiers that offered enormous bandwidth since that gave better transients. But when used with some braided loudspeaker cables, they became slightly unstable and sounded dull. I was told these amps sounded superior. My ears told me different. We finally found out what was happening, but the messenger was blamed of course. At the level of technology we are now, it gets more and more important to understand how our auditory system works. As with all new developments and insights, there are always people that feel insecure when their firm technical base is attacked. Discussing this online often leads to nasty behaviour. So to those that don't trust listening tests, you might be right or not, but if you think you're right, please visit a channel or site that uses testing methods you trust. That's fully ok. There is a minority that wants photos and or videos of my three reference setups. I don't do that for a number of reasons. First, it really is of no use to you. Second, I am rather sure that it will give lots of discussions for there are always people that know better, even if they haven't been there. Third, my setup 2 and 3 in the studio are placed in a way that for good photos I would have to break down my video setup, change lightning and probably have to reshuffle it in a way that it would become more accessible. Space is a premium there and it would be too time consuming to rearrange all. I make those graphics on how the equipment is tested and that gives you a clearer information. All equipment in setup 1 downstairs is black and would need the studio lights from the third floor. Again far too much work and rather inconvenient for the aesthetics committee. I am frequently asked what equipment is the best, or what combines best with the list of equipment I get sent. This is impossible to answer. If you visit a good dealer, it will take at least half an hour if he wants to give you an advice that would fit. And that's in the direct contact. Doing that chatting over YouTube comments or DM would even take more time. And time is a premium running a YouTube channel, the way I do. Even telling everyone that I don't do personal advice already cost me half an hour on a good day and considerably more on a bad day. 
Good advice should be based on gathering information about the equipment, the room, the music played, the sound preferences and so on. Chances are that I have no hands on experience with the larger part of the equipment you use. I do close to 50 videos a year, of which probably 35 to 40 are reviews. And that is ranging from network players costing in between 100 and 18,000 euros. Then I do a few streaming amps and that's it. I don't do turntables, almost never normal amps and never loudspeakers apart from a few active streaming speakers. That leads to the next question. What I review or what topic I discuss is fully decided by me, myself and I. For reviews goes that I must find the product interesting. That can be because of earlier experiences with the manufacturer, a tip of contacts in the industry or a convincing pitch by a manufacturer or distributor. I will give you a few examples from recent history. Stack Audio approached me with loudspeaker dampers that absorb vibrations. That was different from other loudspeaker feed I had reviewed and the story made sense, so I reviewed them. The Arkham Radia A25 amplifier was chosen since I had reviewed the Arkham S830 and loved its Class G power amps in it. The A25 also has Class G amps. The Holo Audio Cyan 2 DAC allegedly used the same tech as the more upmarket Holo Audio May Level 2 DAC. By simplifying peripheral features like a display, the Cyan 2 should sound a lot like the May Level 2 I reviewed earlier. Both the Arkham A25 and the CN2 were bought after a short period to bring my reference setups up to date. The Aurelic Vega 2.2 I had seen at the High End Munich show. There three new and upgraded streamers were introduced that over the last year were released. Having owned an Aurelic Ares G2 for my setup 1, I know what Xiangtian Wang, President and CEO of Aurelic can do. Any product coming from there is interesting. Direct Live is another interesting product that offers very good room correction at an affordable price. As far as I am concerned, room correction for the true high end setups doesn't cut it. I just hear the processing masking the refinement of that class of equipment. But in a broader market, say up to 20k or even higher, it does really good things and since it has a price point that fits in that category, I reviewed it. I hope this gives you a clue on how I select subjects for reviews. My loudspeaker placement video is still the most watched video I made. But the majority of background videos I make are on digital audio and are a response on questions I got. Like this video. Sometimes a question requires a whole video to be answered, like how DNA works and how you should use an external DAC with your streamer. The video improved the sound quality of your DAC for free explained how to prevent the reconstruction filter in your deck from overshooting. There was a group of viewers that got the concept immediately, but a larger group understandably didn't. So I made a video more on the 3db trick. Given the 17,000 plus views, it was needed badly. But it's the kind of videos I like making most since it gives a better understanding of digital audio. From the beginning I decided that I would focus on streaming audio and related things. So of course network players, streamers if you like, but also active loudspeakers with streaming integrated, network switches, although I didn't know that when I started, digital to analog converters and of course software that facilitates this. Initially I had imposed a 2000 euro limit per product on myself, but over the years I have let go of that. I still don't review normal loudspeakers since that is logistically undoable without disturbing our living space. In practice that more or less also goes for larger equipment. If it doesn't fit my racks I'm unlikely to review it. And sometimes choices are made for me. If I can't get a review sample on loan I will normally not review that product. 
in general that are products for manufacturers or distributors that like to be in control over the outcome of the review, something I don't offer. And no, I won't review equipment from viewers that offer me to lend their equipment, for although I handle review equipment with the utmost care, it is always possible it gets damaged. And even the slightest scratch can be frustrating for the viewer. However, I appreciate the fact that they are offering their precious equipment. Keep them coming, those questions, with the exception of buying advice and the like of course. I also appreciate suggestions for reviews. But if you do, please motivate your suggestion. It sounds great doesn't say much. And for as far nasty reactions are concerned, I usually don't see them. The channel is moderated by YouTube and a good friend who keeps those messages far from me. The same goes for the email address linked to the channel. I do have to protect myself a bit to keep enthusiastically making videos for the channel. Because that is what I have enjoyed doing for the past 10 years and that is what I will continue to do in the near future. And with that promise I end this video. Next week. At Friday 5 pm Central European time there will be a new video again. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram. So you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.